Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I am the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. And today I want to continue, but before I continue, I have to apologize for my last video. I kept saying Torah when I wanted to say Talmud. Okay, again, Torah are the five books of Moses. Uh, Moses gave instructions to the Israelites. Uh, according to the law. And Talmud was an interpretation, first it was oral interpretation of Torah. It was written or it was com com combined and collected mostly during probably the Bab Babylonian time and then written down. And the rabbis during Jesus' time and the scribes and the Sadducees uh, were using Talmud quite a lot. They were not using so much Torah as the interpretation. And the interpretations are not inspired. They were somebody's opinion. And Paul used a lot, since he was a rabbi himself, he used a lot of um, these uh, interpretations in Talmud. So that's why I kept saying um, Torah, but it was Talmud. She, uh, Paul was using Talmud quite a lot of Talmud when he says women should be quiet or women should cover their heads. Um, that was not, it's not Old Testament. And so we have to be aware when we read uh, Paul that we see the difference between when he was inspired and when he's giving his own advice from Talmud. Um, Talmud was not very um, liberating to women, in the opposite. They were uh, really trying to keep women in bondage. Now we read last time that Paul said it himself that women were liberated as well as men, that in the church that Christ liberated us and freed us. Actually, it wasn't Paul. I, I think I read from uh, Frank Viola that says that we are liberated. We are the most liberated in the church, the bride of Christ, the lady uh, is the most liberated woman in the universe. And we are. And, you know, for me, that is just so wonderful that we are liberated. We are liberated from not only Satan, but we are liberated in general. Uh, Frank Viola said last time, I read it last time, um, that... The church existed before the angels. So spiritually, the church, we existed before we even came into existence in our body. Now, you know, that's very hard to understand. And that's something that you may want to investigate a little bit more. Because that's something new for me, too. But really, it makes sense that before we came into this world, that our spirit existed before. Because when God created the first human being, he took the dirt, he breathed, he formed the human being, he breathed in the human being the breath of life. That breath came from God. That spirit came from God. And that may have been the first time when that spirit of the church went into that first human being, which we know was male and female. And so how did we end up then that the church again is to become male and female in one body? That's because the first Adam was male and female as well. 
okay? Jesus quoted um, Genesis when Genesis said, therefore the man shall leave father and mother and cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. The man leaves father and mother because they were separated. The human being was separated in men and the man and in the woman. And therefore, the man will leave father and mother and they cleave to his wife and they become one flesh again. The same thing happens in the church. In the church, again, the man and the woman is uh, joined and they form one body, male, female body. And if that is not an explanation or is if that is not a hint that in the beginning it was the same way, then I don't know what else I'm going to say. Because, you know, you have to think a little bit. You have to use the Holy Spirit in order to understand how God created us. We had that first Adam, okay? And that first Adam, male and female, okay, Adam. That first Adam was supposed to. Now, here it is. It's not just male and female. But they were connected to God. So it was more a trinity, male, female, and Christ, okay, or God. And together they were this trinity. And this Adam was supposed to fulfill what God's intention was for humankind. But that first Adam failed. And when he took he her, he, I'm talking about the human being, male and the female, took from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They failed. And they were disconnected from God, no longer the Trinity. And not only was were they disconnected from God, but the whole Trinity um, failed. They no longer were connected with each other. Okay? But the intent of God was that they were one trinity. God, man, woman. And they couldn't fulfill it. And so then God said, well, I have to come into this world to rescue what I have lost. What did he lose? the man and the woman. So he became human being himself. He became flesh in Jesus Christ in order to restore this trinity. And this trinity is what? That trinity is the church or is Christ. Or is a Messiah. Now this is a mystery. And God showed Paul some of this mystery. But I don't think the whole complete mystery. I mean I think a lot of stuff Paul saw. And yet it was covered really, really fast. This mystery was covered uh, the, the early church didn't make it very long, 300 years, okay? Actually, not even 300 years because Christ died around 30, 33. And so after that, the church kind of started flourishing. The first apostle kind of learned and had, you know, got revelations from God how the church is supposed to function. And then Paul came and and God gave Paul a lot of revelations about the church. But then, like by 300, and even before, the church was struggling quite a lot. They had a lot of false teachers in the church that was messing up the, um, the, the principles or the intent for the church that Paul taught. Then by 300 and I believe it was 316, Constantine, the Emperor Constantine from the Roman Empire, took over 
he took over the church and he is was the one that then started to determine the direction of the church and what the church was supposed to believe he changed many things um in the church he uh, you can say that he started christian or paganizing should it be paganizing he christianized the pagan rituals that's what he did okay the church of rome had many gods and he made christianity the church christianity the state religion however many people would have not taken or given up the pagan uh, rituals and pagan gods and so it was very easy for constantine who some say didn't even get baptized until he he was dying uh, he co continued himself to believe in uh, the sun god and continued sun worship and so gradually the uh, the church and um the the christian beliefs were kind of changed and mingled with pagan rituals and i can go in pretty much details for instance um diana and uh, the horus became mary and jesus and was worshipped mary started to be worshipped as the mother goddess and we also know that for instance christmas actually not everybody knows but christmas used to be the um, birthday of the sun god solstice um, and so those holidays were kind of christianized and so now they said oh you know christmas now is christ's birthday which we should actually know that it's not christ's birthday that christ was born in september so constantine started changing a lot of the christian beliefs and within the next thousand years uh, the roman catholic church totally dominated um, the era in europe everything else everybody that believed differently from the roman catholic church was killed uh, the inquisition was finally started to continue to really eradicate everybody who believed differently than the roman catholic church and so now i mean after 15,000 years around 1500 like i said last time uh the the reformers started to kind of question things and so since that time we have gradual changes within the system however when we look today at any of the church even the evangelical churches baptist um, other evangelical churches we see very clearly that these evangelical churches still have a whole foot or even more in the roman catholic church when it comes to traditions and rituals and the way church is conducted i said so many times church is not an institution but that's what we have today the day we have or we believe that the church is an institution we have a hierarchy in the church okay up here we have let's look at the roman catholic we have the pope and the pope is yeah the only one who's connected to the christ he is the um substitute of christ here on earth uh, we look at other churches the the pastor is on top and people are just almost bowing down to the pa to pastors they supposedly know god's word and everybody else are sheep that are following and are not thinking on their own and are not studying and growing on their own um you have an institution that the roman catholic decided to have again sunday as the day when we go to church sunday 
Now, what does that tell you? Sunday. The word sun is in it, right? The day of the sun. And what we, did I say about Constantine? Sun worship. So Constantine uses the Sunday to worship. So who are we worshiping? Are we worshiping the sun? Or are we worshiping really Jesus Christ? Because the Bible says that the Sabbath is supposed to be holy. In the Ten Commandments, it says, uh, you know, keep the Sabbath. Okay? Sabbath is not Sunday. Sabbath is Saturday. And the Jews today still keep Sabbath um, as the day of worship, the day of rest. And we continue, we continue to worship God on Sunday. Why? I don't understand. I really don't understand. It, it's, it's beyond me when you do the research. It's beyond me why we're still doing this. None of the reformers said, well, actually, I shouldn't say that because there are denominations who do worship on Saturday. And uh, I think the Seventh-day Adventists are doing that. And I think it is right. We shouldn't be worshiping on Sunday. I mean, if somebody, Paul says, you know, don't, uh, you know, look at uh, whether you should be worshiping on Saturday, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter whether you worship on Sunday. For us Christians, it doesn't matter. You know, worship on Thursday, whatever. Okay, we're not under Jewish law anymore. However, if we worship sometime, you know, maybe we should do it on the right the right day. Or I should be aware that Sunday is, is the day of the sun. Okay, so there's a lot of things that the church kept, kept, uh, continue to do um, that the Roman Catholic Church started. And the Roman Catholic Church started or changed a lot of things, a lot of things that are not biblical, that are not the original intent of the apostles or Jesus or, or Paul. And um, But we continue it. Um, there's many other things, like for instance, oh, I'm going to bring another one in, tithing. There is no uh, tithing. Okay, tithe is not something that Paul even mentioned that we are supposed to be to continue. Tithing is an Old Testament um, practice. The, uh, the Jews had to tithe with the Levites. They had to give the tenth to the temple of the Levites because the Levites, didn't, Levites did not get a piece of the land. They were uh, the priests. And so the Israelites had to tithe and give a tenth to the Levites. So it's very different. Now, Paul instructed to support the poor or maybe poor needy churches. And that was a different thing. It's a very different thing to give to the poor. It's a different thing uh, than, um, you know, support uh, or give the tenth to the church. The church is supposed to be not an institution, but it's more like a, a fellowship, a home fellowship, where people are all equally involved. And so a pastor is not really necessary. Paul never, he did take some support from some churches, but he was proud to tell the churches that he is working for his living. Okay, when he was in prison, he had some churches that were supporting him. But when he was not in prison, he worked as a tent maker. He did not expect any of the churches to support him, none of them. And today we have pastors, you know, that get an income. We have church buildings that need to be paid. Well, that all did not exist in the first, first churches. People met in the homes of people. 
And so um, this tithing did not come into existence until people realized, wait a minute, we need some money here to keep up, you know, these buildings and to pay for the pastors and the youth pastors and whatever, all the stuff they have, because people couldn't volunteer anymore. Um, and I think that's terrible. I mean, there are some churches where um, people are equally involved in preaching, but that's, in, in most denominations doesn't exist. So the church has been, the, 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 the structure of the church has been very, very much church uh, changed. And today we are very, uh, we are not very aware of that what we're doing in the church is really just tradition. It's not biblical. So I really want to uh, continue with this because it's a very important, very, very important topic um, that we look at that clearly. So, but I'm going to finish up to, for today. And I can tell this is going to be a long, uh, a long topic because it is just so, so important. And again, I only have one chapter in my book and it, it's really probably a lot shorter than the shorter version than what I'm giving you about the church because it's so important. Again, read Frank Viola and Milt Rodriguez. Uh, Milt Rodriguez has written some really great books. Uh, I really like uh, Milt Rodriguez's books. So, um, and Milt Rodriguez is the one that I met and um, I had a great time with him. A very good man. So, anyways, I'm going to finish up. I'll talk to you later. And until then, keep reading, keep studying, do some research.